turn it this way a little bit so it's not too shaky. Hey, everybody. You'll have to let me know if you can hear me. I'm trying to do this on, trying to set it up a different way than I normally do. I'll let a few people show up and then we'll do our little chat about um, new grad residency programs because I get asked a lot about a lot of those. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to knock you all over. And then we can just go into like a Q&A. Dakota, hi, Dakota. Jenna Cicerano. Hey, guys. Um, like I said, just let me know if you can hear me. Hi, Menwa. Hi. Um, and then if not, oh, here's a microphone button. We'll see if, but hopefully, Henry, Grace, hello. I'm, play the, I'm playing around with the settings. Okay, good. You can hear me. We, I, I'll, be, I'll tell you a brief tangent and then we can jump into it. So I have always... <laughs> I am not good at technology and I've always used a um, this like other streaming service because I didn't realize you could just like natively go live from within YouTube. So for months I have been like trying to figure out streaming software that like gamers use um, and trying to get Joe to do it. And I've like watched so many videos and I'm just so confused. And Joe comes up tonight and he's like, why wouldn't you just do like go live from YouTube? Which I found out was an option 10 minutes ago after I wasted like hours of my life so there's my there's my um I shouldn't probably be doing this but hello everyone thanks for being here I'm glad you can hear me um so like we had done a kind of last time um I <laughs> Thank you for laughing with me or at me. We'll just stay with me. Um, we'll talk really quick about new grad residency programs. Um, and then we can go into like any Q&A or whatever you have. So if you guys are watching this later and you're new, I'm Liz. I'm a family nurse practitioner and I make videos about like those things, nursing things, mom things, life things, and not technology because <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> I know. It's like, oh gosh, Joe. <laughs> Every, Joe also like, was, he just walked away. He's like, I can't handle this right now. Okay, so nurse, um, new grad residency programs, I get for nurses, I get asked about these all the time. You know, do you need to be in them? Should I only apply to these? Um, so I thought we could Oh, thanks for the super chat, Emily Miller, I am having a great week. Are you having a good week? Um, I thought, I get at like, are they necessary? And um, I'll tell you, I thought the pros of them. And then I guess not like really cons, but like just things to consider. Um, and then like the other way that you don't have to be in them. Bottom line is you don't have to be in them. So the pros of new grad residency programs, and those are basically, if you're not familiar with them, you graduate from nursing school, they scoop you up and you apply to these programs and you don't necessarily have a job straight into. So it's not like, um, let's say you're getting into a pediatric hospital and you are getting into a pediatric residency program. You don't necessarily know what floor you're going to work on, but it's this program that is supposed to teach you, like, give you new grad skills along the way you usually meet with them every you know so often you have special classes um and then they you can kind of match into a unit that you want to be in um they're beneficial in that they're used to dealing with new grads all the time um so they can sort of provide you with um some of the resources that you might need like here's an orientation to the hospital here's some things that new grads typically don't always know you know you might go through classes on ekgs things like that you might just have some new grad like powwows you know where they gather you all together and they ask you you know like oh how are you doing emotionally with this change and i think that's really beneficial i think it's really cool to get to know some people through them. Um, but I don't think other than that, that they don't, they're not necessary. Um, I have heard from people that a lot of the classes are just fluff. You know what I mean? Like they get together and everyone's like, yeah, this wasn't helpful. I should also add, I didn't do one because I applied to a bunch and I didn't get accepted into any. So if you guys have ever been in a new grad residency program, let me know down below too, because you guys are probably going to know more from this. I've talked to a lot of people about them. Um, and so this is kind of like a compilation of what I've heard from other people, but I have not actually done them. Um, thanks, Batool, for the super chat. Um, hope you're having a good week. I um, So I haven't actually done them. 
things that, but I've heard people have had like good friendships that come out of it. So that can be helpful. It can also be really helpful if you're trying to get into like an ICU and you get scooped up into one of these things and they rotate you maybe through different things or they find like, okay, yes, you can go work in this ICU setting. Um, or you just want to get into PEDS in general and PEDS can be harder to get into. So getting into the, one of these new grad residency programs can get you into jobs that you might not necessarily have been able to get into. Or another one that's popular is, um, some hospitals have like ICU for adults residency programs. And then you don't know which ICU you're going to get put into, but you get kind of shuffled into it. And that's a good way to get into these things. Labor and delivery does a lot of them. Um, other usually specialized units that are harder to get into have these residency programs. They have longer orientations. They're used to uh, pulling in new grads and kind of taking you through this long process of onboarding. That being said, I don't think they're necessary. There are not like essential. I obviously didn't do them. Um, a lot of other people aren't doing them. I saw Kadra said that she also uh, that um, you also didn't get into one. Um, a lot of people I applied to like twelve, like at least twelve. I didn't get into any, and I'm fine. Um, I think the more important thing here is just finding a unit that is going to Jennifer Smith said the residency program is a waste of time. That's what I kind of feel like. I kind of feel like the residency program, a lot of the class, like it's really helpful for getting you the job, but it's the classes that you go through for new grads I've heard are useless. It's kind of like your senior year of nursing school when they're doing all of those, like in a four-year program, when you're doing all those fluff classes, it's like a fluff class where you're like, why, why am I, if you're a night shift nurse, especially like you there during the day. And that just seems really, really annoying. Um, but I think the vibe of the unit is so much more important. You want to get into like the unit that I was on wasn't a new grad residency program, but they were very used to hiring new grads. So that's something that you can ask in the interview process to see, you know, like how used to are how used to new grads are you? Do you ever extend orientations? What do you do for new grads? And most of the jobs should be able to tell you, this is what we do for new grads. If you are like, hey, I'm a new grad, um, what do you usually do for new grads to get them up to speed, especially? This is gonna be such a huge question going into everyone who's graduating post this pandemic because a lot of you, uh, you were pulled from your clinical sites. What are you doing for new grads? And if the site can't say, what they're doing, they're just like, oh, I don't know. That's a red flag. I probably wouldn't go there. And in that case, maybe search within that institution for a new grad residency program. But bottom line, they're not necessary. Um, a lot of people that I've talked to have said that they're just kind of a waste of time. Other people have had glowing things to say about them. I've heard that you can get good friends from them and they can offer you a slightly longer orientation and they're used to working with new grads so they don't come in with any expectation. But other than that, Wow, wow. I haven't heard like a ton. So if you guys have any other experience with it, I would love to hear it down below. But I don't want you to be discouraged. If you didn't get into one. Remember, I applied to at least 12. And I got in, I didn't even get no one emailed me back. No one wanted to talk to me. And uh, I, it was fine. Like, you know what I mean? Like it will, in the long run, be okay, find a unit that is um, welcoming of new grads. Sometimes, Another tangent off of this one. Sometimes those units that are welcoming of new grads, I have a video about like um, questions to ask in your nursing interview that are red flags that I will leave linked down below after this. Look, um, those jobs that are hiring a lot of new grads, just make sure that they're not hiring new grads because everyone else has run away. That was my first nursing job. Um, everyone else ran away. And so they're like, oh yeah, we only hire, we hire so many new grads. And I was like, oh, that's perfect. It was, it was a yikes job. That's why everyone was there. So if you have any other questions on that, feel free to leave them in the chat. But if not, I'm going to scroll backwards and start going through some of your questions. So thanks, everybody who's hanging out. Um, Dakota said, I'm so excited. I want to be a pediatric nurse. What can I do as a 15 year old in the medical field? Uh, and how do you become a nurse? How, be how do you become a nurse? How many years? So I have a couple videos on that. If you go to my nursing playlist, um, there's a ton, of, there's a couple on like different programs, like an ADN versus a BSN. BSN is going to be four years and ADN is going to be like two or three. Um, you can, there's lots and lots of options. Um, the quickest is usually like if you graduated and you wanted to become a registered nurse, like to do an ADN program afterwards. Um, but there's lots and lots and lots. 
onto that playlist. So if you have any questions, come to a, you can send a message me on Instagram um, or come to another live and ask it there. Um, Joyce said, is it possible to have a hospital deny you for an ICU specific residency? I mean, probably, like I said, I didn't get very far in any of my residency interviews. They um, just said, no, thank you. Um, but I think most of the time from what I have heard from people, you either get hired into a re ICU residency program or you don't. Most of them seem to be like ICU specific. So if you guys have ever had any experience with that, then let me know because like I said, I've never done that. Kirsten, thank you. That's like the sweetest thing ever. Thank you. Oh my gosh. You guys are the sweetest. I hope you're having a delightful week. I so appreciate you. Um, let's see. Let me scroll back. Are you guys having a good week? I feel like um, I talked about this on Instagram, but <laughs> my mom's downstairs. She'll probably hear me. Uh, my mom came to visit and she's from the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. And it's very cold there. And she came to visit here and we've been in like 90s and sunny. And then we came here, she came here and it's raining and it's 60 until the day she leaves. And then it warms up. I was like, go figure mom, <laughs> go figure. Um, uh, someone, Jennifer, so the residency program was a waste of time. And that's just, that's what I've heard from quite a few people. Um, Shane Erickson said, might they help to kind of ease the transition into being a new grad nurse? Um, to, so I think a lot of that of just easing the transition is just time. I don't know what they could possibly offer you to be honest. Um, that would ease that transition. You know what I mean? Because that's just about getting comfortable in the role other than if it has a really good support system where maybe it meant bud buddies you up with like a mentor nurse, that would be really effective. But that's in my experience, that's always been a unit led thing where you have mentors, on the unit. Um, it could pair you up. And the other thing that could help would be it would just give you a support system within your peers, where you would get to know like, oh, you are also new, you might not work on my unit, but like, we can commiserate together on the fact that this is a challenging transition. Um, Kadiana, I was gonna ask if it makes it easier to ease in with a new grad residency. Um, Zan says it seems more and more hospitals are requiring them and not offering other new grad positions. And like I said, that's fine. It's not like there is a negative to them. I just have so many people that come to me and are panicking that the job they were offered wasn't a new grad residency program. And I do not, I just don't think they're necessary. I think schools too, I've heard kind of push them in a way that's kind of weird. Like I feel like nursing school is just so I feel like all of these lives are just me ranting about nursing school and how it's a mess. I feel like nursing school is so disjointed from the reality of nursing that they push it so hard. And then if you don't get in, you feel like a failure. Like I know that's how I felt. I felt like all of my peers got into ICU, L and D, um, PEDS, like new grad residency programs. And I didn't, and I was a failure. I wasn't a failure. It was just like, it just was what it was. And I wish they didn't push it so hard. Um, Danny says, I work in a pediatric ICU. And other than the longer preceptorship, the new grad program is a joke. They have random people teaching random things in the first two weeks, and then it was out on the floor. And that honestly was my experience, not in a new grad residency program, the hospital. So it all depends on I think where you get hired. The if they're saying no, we don't have a new grad residency program, and you're going to be on your floor on the on the floor on your own in three weeks that's a, like, no, like, yes, you, they need to do something else. But my, the work where I worked, everyone, when they got welcomed to the hospital, you had two weeks of classroom work before you were allowed out on the unit. I mean, it was total joke. It was like fire drills and how they like to, you know, like all of those types of things, just kind of a waste. Um, Sunny said, hi, uh, which nursing specialty should you should potential NPs work in? That's going to totally depend on where what kind of NP you want to be. If you want to be a pediatric NP, you need to work in peds. Um, I think a, for an FNP, adult, some dabbling in adult is good. Um, I also found dabbling in peds was helpful, but not necessary. But it really depends on where do you want to work. If you want to work in acute care as a P as a, a nurse practitioner, so you want to work in the hospital, then you need to work probably in an ICU so that you have all of the acute care knowledge. Like you need to be a master of that craft so that can trickle down. Um, I think I would just like go backwards from it. You know what I mean? I have a couple of videos on one on like 
the best FNP jobs uh, or nursing jobs to become an FNP um, from people I've talked to. The biggest ones are not to avoid, but like if you work in labor and delivery and you think long term you want to work in primary care, you might want some other experience. Um, not that you can't do it. I certainly have friends that did labor and delivery or like just NICU and now work in family medicine. They just had a lot harder of the time because they had to learn everything versus I already knew a lot about cardiology and a lot about kidneys and diabetes uh, because of the floors that I worked on. So just go backwards from it um, and see where do you want to end up and what knowledge would really get helpful you know, to get. There. Um, what sort of Christine Crayan said, what sort of things should you be looking for when you ask them, do they hire or what do they do for new grads? So that would just be, um, you could just ask that, like, what do you offer in terms of training new grads? Um, that would be like, oh, maybe we'll have a flexible orientation period for you. So if you, or you should ask in any interview what the orientation looks like. And if they say it's eight weeks and that's pretty like, it is eight weeks period, you know, something for a new grad could be, you know, is that flexible? If since I am a new grad, if I need more time, will you honor that? Or like, what's the ramp up schedule for my being a new grad? Um, since I am a new grad, will it be ramped up slower, you know, like really showing me like, this is how the pumps work. You know what I mean? Because a new grad, you just have to learn so many new things. So you should start with maybe fewer patients. Um, versus, you know, coming in off of a different unit where you're starting full, will there, but mostly the thing would just be like orientation, um, hopefully pairing you with preceptors that in um, one thing you could ask is do your preceptors volunteer to be preceptors? Or are they forced into being a preceptor? I have worked on units that have done both. And the experience is very different. Uh, if your preceptor wants, is it someone who wants to teach you as teach new nurses, they're going to be very different than someone who is like being forced to do it because there's no one else. So those are some things you can ask about. And um, what are the steps? I wouldn't, I guess I wouldn't necessarily um, maybe ask other people on the unit, like what typically goes down if things are not going well. I don't know if you'd want to bring that up in an interview, like, hey, if I'm not doing so hot, what are you going to do for me? Um, or, you know, what do they offer mentorship? That's another really good one. I was like, I I'm thinking of it, friends, that's not the right word. Um, Caitlin said, I'm currently finishing up my second year of a BSN program and love your videos. Oh, thanks. What did you um, find were the major differences between adult and peds nursing and which did you prefer? So I massively preferred um, adult pediatrics. Uh, the biggest difference was, um, I don't know, I worked in such different feel, like such different. Um, I worked in cardiology and peds and then um, GI liver kidney stuff in adults. Um, but the biggest thing was probably that the kids were um, a fix for the most part. And then they sort of resumed, there was just more resiliency there, I guess. And you fix them and they got better and they left. Whereas with the adults, um, the population that I was with, one, they just got better so much slower and they were babies a lot of the times, which I'm a baby when I'm sick, so I don't blame people. But also the, the chronicity was there with the adults, not that there weren't chronic kids. There were a lot of chronic kids, but even the chronic kids seemed to like you did the surgery and they just got a little bit better. But the adults, um, you know, you saw them, you saw them, you saw them, and a lot of them ended up passing away either in that admission or a subsequent one. So it was just a lot sadder. Um, a lot of the that I mean, physically, like adults, we had a lot of patients who were like 500 plus pounds. Um, that's not abnormal in the adult world, that physically, and if they're total care, that physically weighs on you. If you're ambulating a lot of your patients, and they weigh, you know, anyone, <laughs> anyone who weighs more than like 30 pounds, it's difficult. And all adults weigh more than 30 pounds. Whereas in kids, especially if you work with babies, it's a lot easier. Um, it was, uh, kids was a lot more education, um, and a lot more incorporating parents versus adults, um, who was less education. Um, uh, parents seem to just ask a lot more questions and want to engage a lot in that more way in that way. But those are probably the uh, kids was just happier for the most part, except for when it was sad. And then it was so much sadder, but kids overall, were much better. I had much few, much less death in peds versus adults. Um, 
but I think that's just going to depend like not one's not better than the other. A lot of people love adults and would never want to do peds. So there's certainly no, like, this is the best and that's the worst. Um, I want to be an NP for oncology hematology patients. This is Ashley Young. Which MP should, program should I look at? Look at um, the job that you want in your area. So look at oncology NP jobs and see what they want. Uh, if you never want to see anyone under the age of 13, then an acute care would be fine. Um, bec if Because I think they do 12 or 13 and up. Otherwise, family would be fine. Very few programs do the oncology certification. There are a couple, I think, that do. But um, I would just look, and this is pretty much across the board for whatever kind of nursing job or NP job you want, look on job boards in your area for the kind of job that you want and then go backwards and see what do they actually want? Cause they'll specify if they don't, if they just say nurse practitioner, then it's really up to you. And I would say, if you know, know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you never want to see a child, then I would just do an adult. I think um, then all your hours are spent with adult anyway. Sorry, I need to drink a water. Um, Emma said, any tips for shadowing a nurse? What should you ask them? And what did you like being asked as a nurse? I'm shadowing my dream peds specialty this weekend. Oh, that's exciting. Um, I would just, mm, I would try to just, I wouldn't ask them a ton of questions. You know, when I get there, I would just say like, thank you so much for like letting me shadow you. Um, and your job in that role is truly to shadow. You could offer, you can't really do anything. Um, they shouldn't ask you to do anything. If you're sitting, I would say, um, is at some point you could ask like, is it, I have, um, you know, could I ask you some questions at some point, but I wouldn't, um, it depends on the relationship with the person too. I have shadowed, had people shadow me that I know. And that was a much more laid back experience, you know, where we're just like chatting. I've also had people shadow me that I don't know. And that one was a little bit more like, um, and that person was like asking me questions all the time. And we were like really busy and I'll uh, like, I had to kind of tell them like, okay, just like questions for like in a little while when things are less crazy. So it depends on your relationship with the person, but I would just say like, thank you so much for like letting me shadow with you. Um, and then, oh, this says my connection is unstable. So we might, um, we might be gone, but um, then seeing if you can wait for a time later and um, to ask a ton of your questions. Um, hang on, I'm dealing with technical difficulties. <laughs> Are we back? Okay. We might have just dealt with technical difficulties. And if we did, let me know and let me know what you heard. And if not, we'll just move on. But moral of the story, if you're shadowing, um, just ask questions, save them all for like one period of time. Um, a good, uh, that way it's not overwhelming to the other person or you. And then just like sit back and watch and don't just watch the nurse. Look at other nurses. You know what I mean? Because everyone's going to be having a uh, different kind of like um, experience vibe and see if you can talk to the other ones because the one you're shadowing, especially if this is a random nurse that they threw you with, um, hopefully they threw you with a friendly one, but don't be afraid to ask some of the other nurses what their experiences have been too. Um, but you're really there to just kind of like literally, as it says, be a shadow. Um, I, Lisa Happy says, thoughts, should I return for my DMP or go to do master's in psych? Depends on what you want to do. If you think you want to stay bedside uh, or not, if you want to stay like in the clinic and have no interest in ever teaching or doing research, your DMP might not be that helpful for you. However, if you're working in family medicine and you see a ton of psych, like that could be really helpful. However, keep in the back of your mind that your employer might not want that from you. I've, um, you know what I mean? Like if they do not want you to practice under your psych scope, because that's kind of, it depends on the state there, but in some states, that employer, even though you are a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner and a family nurse practitioner, I've heard of some people um, like trying to combine the two. And when it's not your own practice, the billing gets weird and they kind of can get kind of odd, but that'll just depend on your state's board of nursing. Um, so it really just depends on what you want to do. If you want to teach though, or you want to get involved in research or like politics, I think you should definitely go for your DNP. Um, let's see. Well, we woke Piper up. She's on the other side of this wall. Um, hang on, do I have my phone? Please hold. 
we're going to text you. <laughs> Please come save this baby. Do, 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 do. Piper is crying. Please help. Thank you. Okay. She's just moaning. She's okay. Um, let us see. Yep. Oh, good. <laughs> Abad. Is that how you say your name? Abad? I hope so. I am going into high school next year and really want to be a pediatric NP. What kind of subjects should I focus on to prepare for the job? Science and statistics. The, whatever math you need in order to get you to the statistics point, that's going to be helpful. Joe came and saved Piper. She's going to be fine. She's going to be mad. It's not me, but she's going to be fine. Um, and then science. So if you're, um, you're going to need for your prereqs, like microbio, uh, microbiology, some chemistry, so chemistry, bio, and anatomy, if they have it, we might have to end this if my first not having this. Um, sorry, if you can hear her crying. Um, I uh, wrote to AGCMP said I applied to a critical care fellowship program when I graduated nursing school in 2005 and was accepted. It was an awesome program and they're still going strong today. Highly recommend. So they're good. There's someone on the other side who recommends them um, because we haven't had a ton of you. So thank you. Um, I heard that once you're accepted into a residency program, you have to commit to the hospital for two or three years. That depends on your job in general. And some jobs like my job required a certain amount of time anyway. Um, even though it wasn't a new grad residency program. Um, have Henry Sidersky, have you seen or heard of any discrimination in the nursing field towards LGBTQ individuals? I've definitely heard of it. I have not, I haven't seen, I guess, a ton of it. I worked in a fairly like um, liberal institution um, and we certainly had, um, like I didn't see it, but again, that's something that just because I didn't see it, uh, that like does not mean in any way that it does not exist. I feel like that's not even um, like it. I wasn't aware of it because that's another thing that like I wish I like am hoping to dive more in general. I think I just kind of want to dive more into like that and like there's so many racial disparities against so many so pretty much every minority. And so I'm hoping that in the future on our, my channel, I can kind of dive into a little bit of that. And it's just gonna, um, because it's so pervasive. And like, this is another good example of like, I as a white, straight woman, like, I don't really I, I, I don't know, because I haven't seen it. But that is not a good example, because I am that you know what I mean. So I, I'm very sure that it happens. I just have not um, personally seen it. I think that's probably gonna, but I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure it happens, um, which is sad. And I hope we can try to change. Um, Liz Lynn Hernandez, um, I just love your name. Um, we'll be starting clinical in this fall for FMP. What would you recommend to get a preceptor during this pandemic is challenging right now um, with clinics taking students that is challenging. Um, I have a video on finding preceptors. The biggest thing is just going to be like LinkedIn. Um, that's going to be helpful. Emailing your state's board of nursing and seeing if um, they can provide you. Sometimes they have like a list of people. Um, sometimes if you are in AANP, if you're a member there, I don't know if ANCC does it, but AANP has a list of preceptors. Um, and they can sometimes get you hooked up with them, but I think it's just really hard and I hope schools step up to it. I just can't believe the schools don't pair you with a preceptor in the beginning, but that's a whole different tangent. Um, but I really hope that they step up a little bit because you're going to need like even our office, we're going to start precepting again, but it was just a mess there for a while and you need help. Um, but I don't really have any great advice there and I'm sorry. Um, Brie, Christine, 13. Wow, I was literally just having a breakdown about this. How did you know about the um, new grad thing? Yeah, because don't worry, I had a huge meltdown about it when I didn't get in and I thought the world was ending. But it's still standing and we are still here. Um, Ebony Sam said, hi, thank you so much for a video. I graduated in April, pressed the NCLEX in May and I applied to five residencies and they froze the hiring project process. Any advice on a rookie nurse on a job search? Just keep applying. I applied to like 150 uh, one five zero jobs uh, for my nurse first nursing job before I found one. And I took the first one I got offered an interview at. <laughs> I was like, done. I'm here. Let's go. So um, 
keep applying. <laughs> you can do it. You will eventually get a job. It might not be your dream job. Mine was certainly not my dream job. I think something that, um, I'm going to go on a social media rant. I think social media is great, obviously, but it also has a lot of downsides. And one of them is people tend to project these like, oh, I graduated and then I got this perfect nursing job. And I think that leaves out a large po portion of the population who don't take an unsafe nursing job for sure. Don't take an unsafe one, but um, you might not get your favorite nursing job straight out of the gate. Um, and I don't think people play that up that much because everyone seems to just get these magical, perfect jobs. And I don't know how it happens because I didn't get one. Maybe it's everyone but me. But make sure that the job, like try to find a safe job that supports you and is willing to train you um, and just apply to like everything under the sun. And eventually you will get a job and know that you don't have to stay there forever. You can move on and you can go to a different job that you're going to love a lot more. I loved my second job a whole lot. And my first job, I... It was a learning experience. Um, let's see. Zan said, Henry, I am a trans nursing student in the South. There's definitely discrimination, but don't let it get you down. We need more of us in the community. Um, especially, yeah, that's a disaster. Um, so yeah, I think it definitely exists. Like I said, I think in the South, it is a whole different beast. This is a different place. Um, and yeah, but like you said, or like Zan said, you need, we need people to show up and be in that space, um, to provide, to like, you know what I mean? Just like provide that care. And I don't know, my brain's not working <laughs> to show up and be there so that we can, um, one, be educated about it. And two, like, I think having a provider that you identify with is hugely helpful. Um, Let's see how Joyce said non-residency related, but how should I go about studying in nursing school when you have children, nap time and bedtime? That is the only time that I was able to study. I did not have a life. <laughs> um, you can do daycare. So I did when Avery was, when I was in school and Avery was a baby, I, we did daycare full time. And one of those days usually was like a homework day for me um, because I worked on the weekend. So nap time and bedtime, you're not going to really have a ton of a life. <laughs> and when you can hand them off to your, uh, if you have a partner or a family member, then do that. But it is really, I mean, um, you don't have a life for a little while. It's real. it's rough, but the end, I mean, I think on the other end, it's worth it. Um, but just knowing that and like getting through it, it's hard. Um, but you can do it. You can totally do it. Um, Lauren Kennedy said, I'm in my second year of nursing school and was wondering how long it normally takes to get onto the unit you're interested in. Cause I've heard, um, people often start on floors like med surge. I started on med surge. Like we just kind of talked about, I started on med surge because that was the job that I got, but I've also heard of people getting into like their dream job. I think some things you can do is you can be a clerk on that unit. You could be a tech uh, or a CNA on that unit to kind of get your foot in the door. And some people just get super lucky and, um, but I think the majority of people um, take a job maybe within the healthcare system that that floor is associated with, and then use that to leverage getting into the unit that you eventually want to work on. Because you're going to learn skills no matter where you are. They're go you're going to learn things and they're going to come with you. And I think, like I said, so many people get this painted picture of like, oh, I got this perfect job right away. And I just don't think that's reasonable in real life for most people. Um, I want you to know I've been giving your video, watching your videos and gave me some encouragement. I needed to go back to school. Oh, I'm so glad, which is a big deal because I was always scared to the idea of nurse, scared to death of the idea of nursing school. Oh, well, thank you. Um, yeah, you guys know, I think nursing school, like it, everyone blows it up. And I mean, it is difficult. Do not get me wrong. It is challenging, but people blow it up into like the hardest thing ever. And I, I think if you're, in the right mindset of it of like, this is going to be challenging. It's time consuming. That is the biggest thing is a lot of people I feel like don't want to give it the time that it needs. Like it is so much information. Um, and so, yes, like if you are, it's going to take a lot more time, like in college, um, 
like if you were comparing me to, I don't know, my friend who was a, I don't know, I feel like any major I'm going to say is <laughs> going to get like poo-pooed, but like the amount of effort it took for me versus in my nursing degree versus my psychology degree was night and day. You know what I mean? Like if you were comparing the two, my psychology self had so much free time and my nursing self had none. And so my, you know what I mean? You just have to like wrap your mind around that and power through. It's not necessarily like this concept is so much harder versus the other concept of like the concepts aren't harder. It's just so much more time consuming. So that was a random tangent about that. <laughs> Sorry, but you can do it. I'm so glad that it's been helpful. Um, Monica, which state do you recommend for BSN nursing degree, Arizona or California? A oh, friend, I don't know. I, <laughs> um, I had originally, I didn't, I'm from California. I did not go to nursing school in California because it took so long to get in. And I was like, I'm going to leave and go somewhere else. So I truly know nothing about that. Um, I know nothing about Arizona's. I'm just no helpful there. I always feel so bad because people are always like, oh, I heard about this nursing school. Like, is that good? I'm like, I know about one nursing school and it's the one that I went to. And then I know about one NP school and it's the one that I went to. So I always feel so bad. Oh, thanks for the super chat, Sonia. Watch one of your videos about note taking in nursing school to get some ideas about buying a new laptop just this afternoon. As usual, you did not disappoint. Oh, thank you. You're super duper sweet. Um, you guys, you're just like the nicest humans and practitioner. Thank you. Inspired me to specialize in women's health. Yes, yes, women's health. Just a thank you all. Thank you guys. Um, women's health. I think everyone, um, we need so many people in women's health. So many awesome people in women's health because women's health is so under educated and everything. And I think one day, maybe if I don't end up, if I don't stay in family medicine, I'm for sure going back to school for women's health because we need kind women's health people. The amount of women's health things that I run into all the time where I'm like, how has one, no one ever like, either they've been just like being treated in a terrible way, or I just, I'm like, you need so much education is mind blowing. Oh, my mom's watching my YouTube video on her phone. I'm like, what is echoing? <laughs> We're back. Um, are you okay? Oh, she's trying to turn it down. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what? I was gonna turn around. I was gonna be like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> anyway, um, sorry for my my tangent. I feel like this live is like all over the place. I had a, I'm really tired, so I had a ton of caffeine right before, and my brain is like, <laughs> it's not working very well. Um, Katiana, you were talking about a cheat book to make while you're going through being a new nurse um, in another video. And do you have example? Do you think you should write the info like examples not to overload with info? You could write down some examples um, like, um, yeah, I would write down like anything to give your notes context. She's talking about I have this like DIY reference find this reference book that I made um, as a new nurse practitioner. And I wish I had made as a new nurse where you can just go through and it's alphabetized. So you could write down like, um, I don't know, chest pain, like, here's what my floor likes to do. If someone has chest pain, do you notify the provider? I should ask, like, is it sharp? Is it, you know, can you, do you feel like you're short of breath, get a blood pressure on them, get a pulse ox, get a, you know, like, what does your unit do if someone complains of chest pain? And you could write down like all of those things. Um, where does your, and then next time you had it, you could like quickly reference that. Um, or let's say like, what is the procedure for, um, pick dressings? How often do we change the dressing? You could write that in your notebook under pick. How often do you change the dressing? Where are the dressings? Like which room, where in the clean room do you keep them? Who does them? If you have to get, if a team can come and do them, what's the thing for the, like, what's the number for the team? You know what I mean? Just like that. And you could give yourself some, um, like context if that was helpful. Um, Ellen, thanks for all the live streams. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> so sorry, this is like a mess. Um, I think hopefully we'll be able to do these maybe every other week again. I don't know. Some people, people either really like them or they really hate them. So I'm just like, well, whatever, they're kind of fun. We're going to go with it. Um, Christine Crayhan said, how long do you have to stay at your first job? What if it's not a good fit? I heard you should stay at your first job for a year at least. So that depends on the contract that you signed. It'll usually specify how long you have to stay. If it didn't specify and you hate it, I mean, and you have another job, 
well, you can go. I wouldn't like leave if you don't have another job, unless you're just absolutely miserable and you um, have some other form of income where, you know, you can do that. Then it's going to be when you're getting a new job, you're probably going to want to bring up, like if they ask you, you're going to need to have an answer prepared as to why you left so quickly. But most jobs will have like, oh, you need to be here for mine was 18 months. Um, but if you already landed a new job, I mean, what are they going to do to you? I thought she needed something. Do you need something? Oh, okay. She's here as a reference for a common question that I haven't even seen yet. Um, would you ever doing, consider doing a psych nurse practitioner program? Sandy? No. <laughs> um, I, that's just not what I'm interested in. Um, I like the bread and butter family medicine psych. So like, very, um, like usually I base I see like very basic anxiety and depression. Um, I, that's just not my, and other than that, I'm just, that's not my passion. And I don't, I think people who are going to see a psych NP, like they need someone to like really love doing psych, um, to be interested in that. You know what I mean? That's just like, not my, it's just not my thing. Um, Batul said, I want to become a surgical nurse practitioner one day. Should I work as an OR nurse? Can I become an OR nurse as a new grad? Yes, I think that would be really helpful. If you want to go into a surgical specialty, you'll probably want maybe ideally like, um, I think there's like an RN first assist that you can eventually get. Is that what you were helping? Oh, that's what she's nodding about. Um, my mom worked in the OR. She says, you definitely need to work in the OR. Do that. She used to work in the OR. And then is an RN first assist, that would be good. Yes, you should also get your RN first assist, which you get after, like, do you have to work in the OR for a certain amount of time first? I think it's a different certification specialty program. And then I think you can actually help with the surgery. Yes, yes, she's nodding. This is good. Um, I would pursue that further. But again, that's, um, well, I guess she worked in the OR. So yeah, take it from her, not from me, because I that was not what I wanted to do. But Go try to work in the OR. Oh, nurse residency programs are good for that. Also, Alyssa from Alyssa All Day on here and on YouTube. Um, she She's Alyssa Presley on Instagram. She works as an OR nurse. It wasn't her first job. It's her second job as a new grad. She's like a year, a little over a year or two into it. Um, and she might be helpful for that. Um, do you know how much psych NPs are paid? I don't. The psych dude on YouTube um, is, let me type it out. So this psych dude on YouTube and um, Presley. Uh, I'm typing in their names. Um, there we go. Those are the channel names. Um, they he goes into a lot of that you can like glass door a lot of psychiatric um, NP jobs. They do make a lot of money, but I would probably not go into it just for the money. Um, you're going to get really burnt out, um, really burnt out. Um, oh, thank you. I love this sweater too. This is my happiness sweater. It's really gloomy outside. So I was like, I need to wear my happiness sweater. Um, Nicholas said, have you ever thought of going further in your education other than a nurse practitioner? I would love to teach one day. Um, I feel like a lot of places want you to have your DNP or like some kind of a doctorate to teach. So maybe one day, um, maybe, maybe one day I, my girls would have to be older. Um, it wouldn't help me clinically. So I have no interest right now. Um, and I, it's so much money and I still have Joe and I have quite a bit of like more than $50,000 still. And we've been like trying to so aggressively pay them off and we just have so much student debt still. So I would have to one pay off my student loans that I already have and then save up for the very expensive DNP program so that I could get a job teaching, which pays me less than I make right now as an NP. So maybe one day when Joe makes more money <laughs> um, or I become YouTube famous. There we go. Um, let's see. Have you, Shane said anatomy coloring book is going to be my best friend this summer in A&P before the fall. Yes. Get the anatomy coloring book. You can just like color. It's very relaxing. It's helpful. Picmonic is also super helpful. I have a ton of, um, I have a code for 20% off of that. I bought that for um, myself when I was in patho and farm and they also now have an anatomy one highly recommend it like saved my life. Um, 
let's see. Hunter said, do you think labor and delivery nurse, it would be a good stepping stone to do anything in peds like NICU? No, I think, I mean, it would give you some skills in terms of like time management, but it wouldn't be like, oh, you need to do this to do that. If you want to go straight to the NICU then go to the NICU. Um, and if you want to work in peds, like try to work that way. I don't think it would be like, oh, you did this. So now it's going to be harder, but I don't think that would directly translate into like, um, I don't think it would be necessary and give you skills other than like time management, like I said, and just like basic nursing skills, like physical skills. All right. And I'm going to wrap things up here in just a moment, guys. Thanks everybody who came. Um, I'll try to answer a couple more questions and then I'm going to go hang out with my mama um, and Joe too, but he's here all the time. My mom's not. Um, let's see. Do you, you, Kadra said, do you have any, I greatly appreciate you being a role model. Oh, thanks. Um, good luck. You'll do great applying to a DNP program. You can do it. You've got this. Go do the DNP thing that I can't do. <laughs> I feel like I'm the worst person to ever have. Um, I feel like it's very ironic that I have some kind of a platform on the nursing field because I'm like, no, nah, I don't want a DNP. I hate nursing school. I think it needs to be burned to the ground and restructured completely. <laughs> probably not um not what people want you to say in the nursing field but it's fine everything's fine you're all gonna do great um nursing school is just such a mess but we can fix it one day one day I'll get brave and I'll go back and get my DNP and I'm just gonna start a revolution we're gonna totally change nursing school and NP school and it's gonna be really great and I need all of you to join me okay perfect um Gabrielle said I'm in high school and eventually want to start my own medical practice. Do you feel like that's a feasible as an NP? Uh, and do you feel it would be possible to minor in business while in nursing school? Um, if you wanted a minor in nursing school, it depends on where you are going to school. It, at my school, you had no extra credits. So you would have to extend your, um, you know, your time frame. And I think like, I guess you could add on extra, but nursing school is already like we kind of talked about very time intensive. So it'd be really hard, I think, to add something else onto that. Um, not that you couldn't, you would just have to go into it knowing like, okay, I'm going to add on an extra semester, or whatever you needed on the end of that. Um, you could also, I mean, if we're really thinking about it, you could also add an MBA later. Um, if you really wanted to dive into it, I think that may almost be more beneficial, because I feel like something like that, an MBA is going to give you more insight into down the road, like really helpful things. I don't know how helpful business classes are. I mean, maybe they're like mind blowing. I don't know. I've never been in a business class. Uh, Nurse Nicole on Instagram has her MBA. And um, she might be a good person to ask for that. I do think it depends on the state in terms of owning your own medical practice, um, and what kind of practice you want it to be. Um, but you can certainly do it as an NP. A lot of NPs have their own medical practice. You just have to be, which it sounds like you probably are like a real go getter. You have to have a business side of it, unless you want to totally contract that out. Um, but you definitely can you in, I don't know in States that you have full practice, you can just go under your own license. If you are in a restricted state for nurse practitioners, you would need to pay a collaborating physician, um, to collaborate with you. Um, on however they felt comfortable. Um, let's see. Okay, we all love your channel hall. Oh, thank you. Um, Zan said, I used to be a sexuality and gender minority educator. I love that. I'd love to work with you, please. That would be amazing. Cause I want to do like a video on something like that eventually. And I think that you would be a phenomenal resource to me because I am just like with most things I'm realizing just so undereducated and hope to fix that slowly. Um, but it's like, really is like, a, I'm like, wow, I know nothing about nothing. Okay, here we go. But that would be wonderful. Thank you. Um, I believe if you can go straight, oh, good, you are helping each other. Thank you, practitioner. Um, the little succulent. Oh, I love that. I just, I saw your icon the other day. I think you commented on something. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just love this icon of succulents. I really like succulents. Um, my dream is to become a nurse, but with my health, I don't really know if I can meet the physical demands during school and the job. I also don't know what my health will be in a few years. Um, that's hard. I think, um, going through, you have to be your own advocate. I think you can, um, one only do things that you're like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I think you can do 
most like anything you put your mind to. Um, but I think you also have to be very, the school's nursing school is a beast and is going to probably give you resistance. Um, the seated nurse is a really good Instagram account. Um, and she does a lot for um, persons with disabilities who like, and she has been at you know, saying, and I've been looking through her profile a lot, and she has pointed out a lot, like, you have to be your own advocate, because the school's not going to necessarily know how to work with someone who is not their cookie cutter human that matches all these, like their traditional students. So you're going to have to kind of educate yourself and be your own advocate. Um, and you can absolutely do it. You're just going to have to get really educated on that. Um, going forward. And I think maybe not taking a job in a hospital unless that's, um, you know what I mean? Like finding a job that's going to fit you the best. Cause there's lots of other types of nursing jobs. You know what I mean? Um, there's such a huge variety of nursing jobs. Go blue hands. Yes. Blue hand pride. Um, let me see. Um, um, my brain's not working. I scrolled too far. Well, that's my own comment. All right, guys, I'm going to do like one or two more questions. And I think there's probably some at the end that I didn't get to see. Um, let's see. Liz really just started this channel to build her revolution. It's true. You're all my minions. You're coming with me. <laughs> um, I believe um, <laughs> I'm going to start a revolution. I would love to. Um, there's a massive delay with the comments. I don't, yeah, it's probably, I don't know if I can control that. I might not be able to. Osmosis YouTube channel is also apparently a really good one for um, anatomy and physiology. Um, have I tried refinancing my student loans? I have private loans. Um, my interest rate is actually great. I think it's only like 3%. I don't want to extend the life of the loan. It's already, I think I have, um, you know, like seven years left if I wanted to pay it off, but we're trying to pay it off a lot quicker. My loans were private. So they like, they were all at a pretty good interest rate because my parents co-signed them. Um, Joe's loans, he, his parents did not um, co-sign his and his were all over the place. We did refinance his. So they're all in one massive clump that we pay like $700 a month for his um, refinanced. But at a lower interest rate. So refinancing is a good option. Just be careful if you're refinancing random tangent, if you want to get like a public service loan forgiveness, because you can't do that. Um, don't do that. We're going to have a video about public service loan forgiveness because, um, and just loans in general at one point, I promise. Um, but be careful of that one. Cause you have to work. You have to keep the loans, how they are. cannot finance. One more question, and then I'm going to go hang out with my mom. Thank everyone who came and hung out. We'll do another one of these in, I think, two weeks, um, hopefully. Um, did you – hi, um, this is from Kristen. Hi, I'm going into my senior year in my BSN program. Did you ever feel like you started to forget things during break? I feel like I'm not retaining anything as I should, which is terrifying all the time. Um, yes, I – it'll come back to you. I say this all the time. People are always, like, so worried. Um <laughs> if after, um, it's just a really, it's a sign, first of all, that you care, which is really good. Like, that's really good that you care. And you're worried about that. Um, as someone who is not necessarily the <laughs> um, student that um, had that same mentality, I was just like, all right, done. Bye. Like, don't need that anymore. Um, it's really good that you do care about that. And you're going to go great places with that attitude. Um, but no, it's fine. When you encounter things in the future, one, you'll either recall it quicker than you think you would, or it'll ring a bell in the future. And this will happen all the time throughout the rest of your life. Um, like a lot of the time, um, and you'll just like be like, I kind of remember, like, I should either like look something up about that. Or like, this is sending off a red flag in my brain. That's all you really need. Those classes set a foundation to give you the basic knowledge to move forward or to set off red flags, you know, in your brain being like, Hey, like you learned something about that. You really need to pay attention to it. And then you can go back and look it up. And since you already have the knowledge, it's a lot easier to like scoop it back up and be like, Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that. And everything's fine. Versus if you were starting from scratch. So you're totally fine. Everyone forgets everything over the summer. I've forgotten, like, I mean, so much, so much, but the red flags go off when I need them to and all is well. All right, guys, thank you for coming um, to this chat. Sorry, it was all over the place. I'll try not to chug coffee before the next one because I feel like my brain was just like, bing, 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 bing. 
me and that's not really helpful for anyone. Um, I hope you all have a lovely, lovely night. Um, if you know anything about new grad residency programs, don't forget to leave it in a comment somewhere to help other people. Um, since I made a video about something I've never done once again, I feel like I do that a lot. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. Like everyone asks these questions. I'm like, I don't, I don't really know, but, um, we're just gonna <laughs> go with it and then trick all of you into answering in the comments. Um, have a lovely night, guys. Bye, Samantha. I will. Have a good night with my mom. Have a good week, guys. Take care of yourself. Be well. And I'll see you in a bit. Bye.